parrot, Wikipedia article audio. Cockatuidia, Psittacoidea, Strigopoidea. Taxonomy. Origins and evolution. Phylogeny. Systematics. Morphology. Distribution and habitat. Behavior. Diet. Breeding. Intelligence and learning. Sound imitation and speech. Cooperation. Relationship with humans. Pets. Trade. Culture. Feral populations. Threats and conservation. Cited sources. Parrots, also known as citizines slash stsanz slash, are birds of the roughly 393 species and 92 genera that make up the order Citisiformes, found in most tropical and subtropical regions. The order is subdivided into three superfamilies, the Citicoidea, the Cockatuidea, and the Strigopoidea. Parrots have a generally pantropical distribution with several species inhabiting temperate regions in the southern hemisphere, as well. The greatest diversity of parrots is in South America and Australasia. Characteristic features of parrots include a strong, curved bill, an upright stance, strong legs, and clawed zygodactyl feet. Many parrots are vividly colored and some are multicolored. Most parrots exhibit little or no sexual dimorphism in the visual spectrum. They form the most variably sized bird order in terms of length. The most important components of most parrots' diets are seeds, nuts, fruit, buds, and other plant material. A few species sometimes eat animals and carrion while the lorries and lorikeets are specialized for feeding on floral nectar and soft fruits. Almost all parrots nest in tree hollows, and lay white eggs from which hatch altricial young. Parrots, along with ravens, crows, jays, and magpies, are among the most intelligent birds, and the ability of some species to imitate human voices enhances their popularity as pets. Trapping wild parrots for the pet trade, as well as hunting, habitat loss and competition from invasive species, has diminished wild populations, with parrots being subjected to more exploitation than any other group of birds. Measures taken to conserve the habitats of some high-profile charismatic species have also protected many of the less charismatic species living in the same ecosystems. Citisiform diversity in South America and Australasia suggests that the order may have evolved in Gondwana, centered in Australasia. The scarcity of parrots in the fossil record, however, presents difficulties in confirming the hypothesis, and there is currently a higher amount of fossil remains from the Northern Hemisphere in the early Cenozoic. Molecular studies suggest that parrots evolved approximately 59 million years ago in Gondwana. The three major clades of neotropical parrots originated about 50 Maya. A single 15 mm fragment from a large lower bill, found in deposits from the Lands Creek Formation in Niobrara County, Wyoming, had been thought to be the oldest parrot fossil and is presumed to have originated from the late Cretaceous period, which makes it about 70 million years old. However, other studies suggest that this fossil is not from a bird, but from a Cenagnathid overaptorosaur as several details of the fossil used to support its identity as a parrot are not actually exclusive to parrots, and it is dissimilar to the earliest known unequivocal parrot fossils. Likewise, the earliest parrots did not have the specialized crushing bills of modern species. 
It is now generally assumed that the Cidisiformes, or their common ancestors with several related bird orders, were present somewhere in the world around the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, some 66 Maya. If so, they probably had not evolved their morphological autopomorphies yet, but were generalized arboreal birds. The combined evidence supported the hypothesis of Cidisiformes being near passerines, i.e., the mostly terrestrial birds that emerged in close proximity to the KPG extinction. Analysis of transposable element insertions observed in the genomes of passerines and parrots, but not in the genomes of other birds, provides strong evidence that parrots are the sister group of passerines forming a clade Cetacopassari, to the exclusion of the next closest group, the falcons. Europe is the origin of the first undeniable parrot fossils, which date from about 50 Maya. The climate there and then was tropical, consistent with the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum. Initially, a neo-avian named Mopsitatonta, uncovered in Denmark's early Eocene fur formation and dated to 54 Maya, was assigned to the Cidisiformes, it was described from a single humerus. However, the rather nondescript bone is not unequivocally Cidisiform, and more recently it was pointed out that it may rather belong to a newly discovered ibis of the genus Ring Keats, whose fossil legs were found in the same deposits. Fossils assignable to Cidisiformes date from slightly later in the Eocene, starting around 50 Maya. Several fairly complete skeletons of parrot-like birds have been found in England and Germany. Some uncertainty remains, but on the whole it seems more likely that these are not direct ancestors of the modern parrots but related lineages that evolved in the northern hemisphere and have since died out. These are probably not missing links between ancestral and modern parrots, but rather Cidisiform lineages that evolved parallel to true parrots and cockatoos and had their own peculiar autopomorphies. The earliest records of modern parrots date to about 2320 Maya. The fossil record mainly from Europe consists of bones clearly recognizable as belonging to parrots of modern type. The Southern Hemisphere does not have nearly as rich a fossil record for the period of interest as the Northern, and contains no known parrot-like remains earlier than the early to middle Miocene, around 20 Maya. At this point, however, is found the first unambiguous parrot fossil, an upper jaw that is indistinguishable from that of modern cockatoos. Psittacoidea Cockatuidia Strigopoidia Other birds The Cidisiformes comprise three main lineages, Strigopoidia, Cidicoidia, and Cockatuidia. The Strigopoidia were considered part of the Cidicoidia, but recent studies place this group of New Zealand species at the base of the parrot tree next to the remaining members of the Cidicoidia as well as all members of the Cockatuidia. The Cockatuidia are quite distinct, having a movable head crest, a different arrangement of the carotid arteries, a gall bladder, differences in the skull bones, and lack the dike texture feathers that in the Cidicidae scatter light to produce the vibrant colors of so many parrots. Colorful feathers with high levels of Cidicofulvin resist the feather-degrading bacterium Bacillus lichenoformis better than white ones. Lorikeets were previously regarded as a third family, Loriidae, 45 but are now considered a tribe within the subfamily Lorini, family Cidiculidae. The two other tribes in the subfamily are the closely related fig parrots and budgerigar. Nestoridae Strigopidae Neotropical parrots Cidicini Citricadini Coracosani Cidiculini
broad-tailed parrots, fig parrots, budgerigar, lorries and lorikeets, balbopsitakis, hanging parrots, lovebirds, cetacea, cytocopes, cerudaptus, halci ornithidae, cyril avis, halci ornus, Pulcrapalia, Sodasterides. Family Nestoridae, two genera with two living and several extinct species of the New Zealand region, family Strigopidae, the flightless, critically endangered Kakapo of New Zealand. Family Cacatuidae, subfamily Nymphocene, one genus with one species, the Cacatiel. Subfamily Calyptorhynchini, the black cockatoos, subfamily Cacatuini, tribe Microglossini, one genus with one species, the black palm cockatoo, tribe Cacatuini, four genera of white, pink, and grey species. Family Cytocidae, subfamily Cytocini, two African genera, Cyticus and Poicephalus. Subfamily Arani, Tribe Arani, 18 genera, Tribe Androglossini, 7 genera. The order Cytisiformes consists of roughly 393 species belonging to 92 genera. The following classification is based on the most recent proposal as of 2012. Superfamily Strigopoidea, New Zealand parrots. Superfamily Cockatuidea, Cockatoos. Superfamily Cytocoidea, True Parrots. Living species range in size from the buff faced pygmy parrot, at under 10 grams in weight and 8 cm in length, 149 to the hyacinth macaw, at 1 m in length, and the cockapo, at 4.0 kg in weight. Among the superfamilies, the three extant Strigopoidea species are all large parrots, and the cockatoos tend to be large birds, as well. The Cytocoidea parrots are far more variable, ranging the full spectrum of sizes shown by the family. The most obvious physical characteristic is the strong, curved, broad bill. The upper mandible is prominent, curves downward, and comes to a point. It is not fused to the skull, which allows it to move independently, and contributes to the tremendous biting pressure the birds are able to exert. A large macaw, for example, has a bite force of 35 kg cm2, close to that of a large dog. The lower mandible is shorter, with a sharp, upward facing cutting edge, which moves against the flat portion of the upper mandible in an anvil like fashion. Touch receptors occur along the inner edges of the carotenoid bill, which are collectively known as the bill tip organ, allowing for highly dexterous manipulations. Seed eating parrots have a strong tongue, which helps to manipulate seeds or position nuts in the bill so that the mandibles can apply an appropriate cracking force. The head is large, with eyes positioned high and laterally in the skull, so the visual field of parrots is unlike any other birds. Without turning its head, a parrot can see from just below its bill tip, all above its head, and quite far behind its head. Parrots also have quite a wide frontal binocular field for a bird, although this is nowhere near as large as primate binocular visual fields. Parrots have strong zygodactyl feet with sharp, elongated claws, which are used for climbing and swinging. Most species are capable of using their feet to manipulate food and other objects with a high degree of dexterity in a similar manner to a human using their hands. A study conducted with Australian parrots has demonstrated that they exhibit handedness, a distinct preference with regards to the foot used to pick up food, 
with adult parrots being almost exclusively left-footed or right-footed, and with the prevalence of each preference within the population varying by species. Cockatoo species have a mobile crest of feathers on the top of their heads, which they can raise for display, and retract. No other parrots can do so, but the Pacific lorikeets in the genera Vini and Figgies can ruffle the feathers of the crown and nape, and the red fan parrot has a prominent feather neck frill that it can raise and lower at will. The predominant color of plumage in parrots is green, though most species have some red or another color in small quantities. Cockatoos are the main exception to this having lost the green and blue plumage colors in their evolutionary history, they are now predominantly black or white with some red, pink, or yellow. Strong sexual dimorphism in plumage is not typical among parrots, with some notable exceptions, the most striking being the Eclectus parrot. 202207 However it has been shown that some parrot species exhibit sexually dimorphic plumage in the ultraviolet spectrum, normally invisible to humans. Parrots are found on all tropical and subtropical continents and regions including Australia and Oceania, South Asia, Southeast Asia, Central America, South America, and Africa. Some Caribbean and Pacific islands are home to endemic species. By far the greatest number of parrot species come from Australasia and South America. The lorries and lorikeets range from Sulawesi and the Philippines in the north to Australia and across the Pacific as far as French Polynesia, with the greatest diversity being found in and around New Guinea. The subfamily Arani encompasses all the neotropical parrots, including the Amazons, Macaws, and Canas, and ranges from northern Mexico and the Bahamas to Tierra del Fuego in the southern tip of South America. The pygmy parrots, tribe Micropsitini, form a small genus restricted to New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. The superfamily Strigopoidea contains three living species of aberrant parrots from New Zealand. The broad-tailed parrots, subfamily Platycercini, are restricted to Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands as far eastwards as Fiji. The true parrot superfamily, Psittacoidea, includes a range of species from Australia and New Guinea to South Asia and Africa. The center of cockatoo biodiversity is Australia and New Guinea, although some species reach the Solomon Islands, Wallacea, and the Philippines. Several parrots inhabit the cool, temperate regions of South America and New Zealand. Three species the thick-billed parrot, the green parakeet, and the now extinct Carolina parakeet have lived as far north as the southern United States. Many parrots have been introduced to areas with temperate climates, and have established stable populations in parts of the United States, the United Kingdom, Belgium, and Spain, as well as in Greece. Few parrots are wholly sedentary or fully migratory. Most fall somewhere between the two extremes, making poorly understood regional movements, with some adopting an entirely nomadic lifestyle. Only three species are migratory the orange-bellied, blue-winged, and swift parrots. Numerous challenges are found in studying wild parrots, as they are difficult to catch and once caught, they are difficult to mark. Most wild bird studies rely on banding or wing tagging, but parrots chew off such attachments. Parrots also tend to range widely, and consequently many gaps occur in knowledge of their behavior. Some parrots have a strong, direct flight. Most species spend much of their time perched or climbing in tree canopies. They often use their bills for climbing by gripping or hooking on branches and other supports. On the ground, parrots often walk with a rolling gait. The diet of parrots consists of seeds, fruit, 
nectar, pollen, buds, and sometimes arthropods and other animal prey. The most important of these for most true parrots and cockatoos are seeds, the evolution of the large and powerful bill can be explained primarily as an adaptation to opening and consuming seeds. All true parrots except the pescace parrot employ the same method to obtain the seed from the husk, the seed is held between the mandibles and the lower mandible crushes the husk, whereupon the seed is rotated in the bill and the remaining husk is removed. A foot is sometimes used to help hold large seeds in place. Parrots are seed predators rather than seed dispersers, and in many cases where species are recorded as consuming fruit, they are only eating the fruit to get at the seed. As seeds often have poisons that protect them, parrots carefully remove seed coats and other chemically defended fruit parts prior to ingestion. Many species in the Americas, Africa, and Papua New Guinea consume clay, which releases minerals and absorbs toxic compounds from the gut. The lorries and lorikeets, hanging parrots, and swift parrot are primarily nectar and pollen consumers, and have tongues with brush tips to collect this source of food, as well as some specialized gut adaptations to accommodate this diet. Many other species also consume nectar when it becomes available. In addition to feeding on seeds and flowers, some parrot species prey on animals, especially invertebrate larvae. Golden-winged parakeets prey on water snails, the kia of New Zealand hunts adult sheep, and the antipodes parakeet, another New Zealand parrot, enters the burrows of nesting grey-back storm petrels and kills the incubating adults. Some cockatoos and the ka with macron ka with macron excavate branches and wood to obtain grubs, the bulk of the yellow-tailed black cockatoo's diet is made up of insects. Some extinct parrots had carnivorous diets. Sudasterids were probably cuckoo or puffbird-like insectivores while mesolasterids were raptor-like carnivores. With few exceptions, parrots are monogamous breeders who nest in cavities and hold no territories other than their nesting sites. The pair bonds of the parrots and cockatoos are strong and a pair remains closed during the non-breeding season, even if they join larger flocks. As with many birds, Pair bond formation is preceded by courtship displays, these are relatively simple in the case of cockatoos. In Cytocyde parrots common breeding displays, usually undertaken by the male, include slow, deliberate steps known as a parade or stately walk in the eye blaze, where the pupil of the eye constricts to reveal the edge of the iris. Allopreening is used by the pair to help maintain the bond. Cooperative breeding, where birds other than the breeding pair help raise the young and is common in some bird families, is extremely rare in parrots, and has only unambiguously been demonstrated in the El Oro parakeet and the Golden parakeet. Only the monk parakeet and five species of lovebirds build nests in trees and three Australian and New Zealand ground parrots nest on the ground. All other parrots and cockatoos nest in cavities, either tree hollows or cavities dug into cliffs, banks, or the ground. The use of holes in cliffs is more common in the Americas. Many species use termite nests, possibly to reduce the conspicuousness of the nesting site or to create a favorable microclimate. In most cases, both parents participate in the nest excavation. The length of the burrow varies with species, but is usually between 0.5 and 2 m in length. The nests of cockatoos are often lined with sticks, wood chips, and other plant material. In the larger species of parrots and cockatoos, the availability of nesting hollows may be limited leading to intense competition for them both within the species and between species, as well as with other bird families.
the intensity of this competition can limit breeding success in some cases. Hollows created artificially by arborists have proven successful in boosting breeding rates in these areas. Some species are colonial, with the burrowing parrot nesting in colonies up to 70,000 strong. Coloniality is not as common in parrots as might be expected, possibly because most species adopt old cavities rather than excavate their own. The eggs of parrots are white. In most species, the female undertakes all the incubation, although incubation is shared in cockatoos, the blue lorikeet, and the vernal hanging parrot. The female remains in the nest for almost all of the incubation period and is fed both by the male and during short breaks. Incubation varies from 17 to 35 days, with larger species having longer incubation periods. The newly born young are altricial, either lacking feathers or with sparse white down. The young spend three weeks to four months in the nest, depending on species and may receive parental care for several months thereafter. As typical of K-selected species, the macaws and other larger parrot species have low reproductive rates. They require several years to reach maturity, produce one or very few young per year, and do not necessarily breed every year. 125. Studies with captive birds have given insight into which birds are the most intelligent. While parrots are able to mimic human speech, studies with the grey parrot have shown that some are able to associate words with their meanings and form simple sentences. Along with crows, ravens, and jays, parrots are considered the most intelligent of birds. The brain-to-body size ratio of cytosines and corvines is comparable to that of higher primates. One argument against the supposed intelligent capabilities of bird species is that birds have a relatively small cerebral cortex, which is the part of the brain considered the main area of intelligence in other animals. However, birds use a different part of the brain the mediorostral HVC as the seat of their intelligence. These species tend to have the largest hyperstriata, and Harvey J. Carden, a neuroscientist at the University of California, San Diego, who studied bird physiology, has discovered that the lower part of the avian brain is functionally similar to that in humans. Not only have parrots demonstrated intelligence through scientific testing of their language using ability, but also some species of parrots such as the Kia are also highly skilled at using tools and solving puzzles. Learning in early life is apparently important to all parrots, and much of that learning is social learning. Social interactions are often practiced with siblings, and in several species, Crushes are formed with several broods, and these, too, are important for learning social skills. Foraging behavior is generally learned from parents, and can be a very protracted affair. Supergeneralists and specialists generally become independent of their parents much quicker than partly specialized species who may have to learn skills over long periods as various resources become seasonally available. Play forms a large part of learning in parrots, it can be solitary, and related to motor skills, or social. Species may engage in play fights or wild flights to practice predator evasion. An absence of stimuli can delay the development of young birds, as demonstrated by a group of Vesa parrots kept in tiny cages with domesticated chickens from the age of three months, at nine months. These birds still behaved in the same way as three-month-olds, but had adopted some chicken behavior. In a similar fashion, captive birds in zoo collections or pets can, if deprived of stimuli, develop stereotyped behaviors and harmful behaviors like self-plucking. 
Aviculturists working with parrots have identified the need for environmental enrichment to keep parrots stimulated. Many parrots can imitate human speech or other sounds. A study by Irene Pepperberg suggested a high learning ability in a grey parrot named Alex. Alex was trained to use words to identify objects, describe them, count them, and even answer complex questions such as how many red squares. With over 80% accuracy. NG Shi, another grey, has been shown to have a vocabulary around a thousand words, and has displayed an ability to invent, as well as use words in context and in the correct tense. Parrots do not have vocal cords, so sound is accomplished by expelling air across the mouth of the bifurcated trachea, in the organ called the syrinx. Different sounds are produced by changing the depth and shape of the trachea. Grey parrots of all subspecies are known for their superior ability to imitate sounds and human speech. This ability has made them prized as pets from ancient times to the present. In the Mass Navi, written by Rumi of Persia in 1250, the author describes an ancient method for training parrots to speak. Although most parrot species are able to imitate, some of the Amazon parrots are generally regarded as the next best imitators and speakers of the parrot world. The question of why birds imitate remains open, but those that do often score very high on tests designed to measure problem-solving ability. Wild grey parrots have been observed imitating other birds. The journal Animal Cognition stated that some birds preferred to work alone, while others like to work together as with grey parrots. With two parrots, they know the order of tasks or when they should do something together at once, but they have trouble exchanging roles. With three parrots, one parrot usually prefers to cooperate with one of the other two, but all of them are cooperating to solve the task. Parrots may not make good pets for most people because of their natural wild instincts such as screaming and chewing. Although parrots can be very affectionate and cute when immature, they often become aggressive when mature and may bite, causing serious injury. For this reason, parrot rescue groups estimate that most parrots are surrendered and rehomed through at least five homes before reaching their permanent destinations or before dying prematurely from unintentional or intentional neglect and abuse. The parrot's ability to mimic human words and their bright colors and beauty prompt impulse buying from unsuspecting consumers. The domesticated budgerigar, a small parrot, is the most popular of all pet bird species. In 1992, the newspaper USA Today published that 11 million pet birds were in the United States alone, many of them parrots. Europeans kept birds matching the description of the rose-ringed parakeet, documented particularly in a first-century account by Pliny the Elder. As they have been prized for thousands of years for their beauty and ability to talk, they have also often been misunderstood. For example, author Wolfgang de Graal says in his 1987 book The Grey Parrot that some importers had parrots drink only coffee while they were shipped by boat, believing that pure water was detrimental and that their actions would increase survival rates during shipping. Nowadays, it is commonly accepted that the caffeine in coffee is toxic to birds. Pet parrots may be kept in a cage or aviary, though generally, tame parrots should be allowed out regularly on a stand or gym. Depending on locality, parrots may be either wild-caught or be captive bred, though in most areas without native parrots, pet parrots are captive bred. Parrot species that are commonly kept as pets include kanas, macaws, Amazon parrots, cockatoos, greys, lovebirds, cockatiels, budgerigars, caiques, parakeets, and eclectus, 
Pionus, and Poicephalus species. Temperaments and personalities vary even within a species, just as with dog breeds. Grey parrots are thought to be excellent talkers, but not all grey parrots want to talk, though they have the capability to do so. Noise level, talking ability, cuddliness with people, and care needs can sometimes depend on how the bird is cared for and the attention he slash she regularly receives. Parrots invariably require an enormous amount of attention, care, and intellectual stimulation to thrive, akin to that required by a three-year-old child, which many people find themselves unable to provide in the long term. Parrots that are bred for pets may be hand-fed or otherwise accustomed to interacting with people from a young age to help ensure they become tame and trusting. However, even when hand-fed, parrots revert to biting and aggression during hormonal surges and if mishandled or neglected. Parrots are not low-maintenance pets, they require feeding, grooming, veterinary care, training, environmental enrichment through the provision of toys, exercise, and social interaction for good health. Some large parrot species, including large cockatoos, amazons, and macaws, have very long lifespans, with 80 years being reported, and record ages of over 100. Small parrots, such as lovebirds, hanging parrots, and budgies, have shorter lifespans up to 15-20 years. Some parrot species can be quite loud, and many of the larger parrots can be destructive and require a very large cage, and a regular supply of new toys, branches, or other items to chew up. The intelligence of parrots means they are quick to learn tricks and other behaviors both good and bad that get them what they want, such as attention or treats. The popularity, longevity, and intelligence of many of the larger kinds of pet parrots and their wild traits such as screaming, has led to many birds needing to be rehomed during the course of their long lifespans. A common problem is that large parrots that are cuddly and gentle as juveniles mature into intelligent, complex, often demanding adults who can outlive their owners, and can also become aggressive or even dangerous. Due to an increasing number of homeless parrots, they are being euthanized like dogs and cats, and parrot adoption centers and sanctuaries are becoming more common. 7778 parrots do not often do well in captivity, causing some parrots to go insane and develop repetitive behaviors, such as swaying and screaming, or they become riddled with intense fear. Feather destruction and self-mutilation, although not commonly seen in the wild, occur frequently in captivity. The popularity of parrots as pets has led to a thriving and often illegal trade in the birds, and some species are now threatened with extinction. A combination of trapping of wild birds and damage to parrot habitats makes survival difficult or even impossible for some species of parrot. Importation of wild-caught parrots into the U.S. and Europe is illegal after the Wild Bird Population Act was passed in 1992. The trade continues unabated in some countries. A report published in January 2007 presents a clear picture of the wild-caught parrot trade in Mexico, stating, the majority of parrots captured in Mexico stay in the country for the domestic trade. A small percentage of this capture, 4% to 14%, is smuggled into the USA. The scale of the problem can be seen in the Tony Silva case of 1996, in which a parrot expert and former director at Tenerife S. Loro Park was jailed in the United States for 82 months and fined $100,000 for smuggling hyacinth macaws. The case led to calls for greater protection and control over trade in the birds. Different nations have different methods of handling internal and international trade. 
Australia has banned the export of its native birds since 1960. Following years of campaigning by hundreds of NGOs and outbreaks of avian flu, in July 2007, the European Union halted the importation of all wild birds with a permanent ban on their import. Prior to an earlier temporary ban started in late October 2005, the European Union was importing about 2 million live birds a year, about 90% of the international market, hundreds of thousands of these were parrots. No national laws protect feral parrot populations in the U.S. Mexico has a licensing system for capturing and selling native birds. Parrots have featured in human writings, story, art, humor, religion, and music for thousands of years. From Aesop's fable The Parrot and the Cat and the Roman poet Ovid's The Dead Parrot to Monty Python's Dead Parrot Sketch, parrots have existed in the consciousness of many cultures. Recent books about parrots in human culture include Parrot Culture. In ancient times and current, parrot feathers have been used in ceremonies and for decoration. They also have a long history as pets, stretching back thousands of years, and were often kept as a symbol of royalty or wealth. In Polynesian legend as current in the Marquesas Islands, the hero Laka slash aka is mentioned as having undertaken a long and dangerous voyage to Aotona in what are now the Cook Islands to obtain the highly prized feathers of a red parrot as gifts for his son and daughter. On the voyage, 100 of his 140 rowers died of hunger on their way, but the survivors reached Aotona and captured enough parrots to fill 140 bags with their feathers. Parrots have also been considered sacred. The Moj people of ancient Peru worshipped birds and often depicted parrots in their art. Parrots are popular in Buddhist scripture and many writings about them exist. For example, Amitpa once changed himself into a parrot to aid in converting people. Another old story tells how after a forest caught fire, the parrot was so concerned, it carried water to try to put out the flames. The ruler of heaven was so moved upon seeing the parrot's act, he sent rain to put out the fire. In Chinese Buddhist iconography, a parrot is sometimes depicted hovering on the upper right side guanyin clasping a pearl or prayer beads in its beak. Parrots are used as symbols of nations and nationalism. A parrot is found on the flag of Dominica and two parrots on their coat of arms. The St. Vincent Parrot is the national bird of St. Vincent and the Grenadines a Caribbean nation. Sayings about parrots color the modern English language. The verb parrot in the dictionary means to repeat by rote. Also clichés such as the British expression sick as a parrot are given, although this refers to extreme disappointment rather than illness, it may originate from the disease of psittacosis, which can be passed to humans. The first occurrence of a related expression is in Afra Ben S. 1681 play The False Count. Fans of Jimmy Buffett are known as parrot heads. Parrots feature in many media. Magazines are devoted to parrots as pets, and to the conservation of parrots. Fictional films include Home Alone 3 and Rio and documentaries include The Wild Parrots of Telegraph Hill. Escaped parrots of several species have become established in the wild outside their natural ranges and in some cases outside the natural range of parrots. Among the earliest instances were pet red shining parrots from Fiji, which established a population on the islands of southern Tonga. These introductions were prehistoric and red shining parrots were recorded in Tonga by Captain Cook in the 1770s. Escapees first began breeding in cities in California, Texas, and Florida in the 1950s. 
they have proved surprisingly hardy in adapting to conditions in Europe and North America. They sometimes even multiply to the point of becoming a nuisance or pest, and a threat to local ecosystems, and control measures have been used on some feral populations. Feral parrot flocks can be formed after mass escapes of newly imported, wild-caught parrots from airports or quarantine facilities. Large groups of escapees have the protection of a flock and possess the skills to survive and breed in the wild. Some feral parakeets may have descended from escaped zoo birds. Escaped or released pets rarely contribute to establishing feral populations. Escapes typically involve only one or a few birds at a time, so the birds do not have the protection of a flock and often do not have a mate. Most captive-born birds do not possess the necessary survival skills to find food or avoid predators and often do not survive long without human caretakers. However, in areas where there are existing feral parrot populations, escaped pets may sometimes successfully join these flocks. The most common era or years that feral parrots were released to non-native environments was from the 1890s to the 1940s, during the wild-caught parrot era. In the Psittacosis Parrot Fever Panic of 1930, a city health commissioner urged everyone who owned a parrot to put them down, but owners abandoned their parrots on the streets. Many parrot species are in decline and several are extinct. Of the 350 or so living species, 130 are listed as near threatened or worse by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and 16 of which are currently considered critically endangered. Several reasons are given for the decline of so many species, the principal threats being habitat loss and degradation, hunting, and for certain species, the wild bird trade. Parrots are persecuted because, in some areas, they are hunted for food and feathers, and as agricultural pests. For a time, Argentina offered a bounty on monk parakeets, resulting in hundreds of thousands of birds being killed, though apparently this did not greatly affect the overall population. Capture for the pet trade is a threat to many of the rarer or slower to breed parrots. Habitat loss or degradation, most often for agriculture, is a threat to many species. Parrots, being cavity nesters, are vulnerable to the loss of nesting sites and to competition with introduced species for those sites. The loss of old trees is a particular problem in some areas, particularly in Australia, where suitable nesting trees must be centuries old. Many parrots occur only on islands and are vulnerable to introduced species such as rats and cats, as they lack the appropriate anti-predator behaviors needed to deal with mammalian predators. Controlling such predators can help in maintaining or increasing the numbers of endangered species. Insular species, such as the Puerto Rican Amazon, which have small populations in restricted habitats, are also vulnerable to natural events such as hurricanes. Many active conservation groups have as their goal the conservation of wild parrot populations. One of the largest is the World Parrot Trust, an international organization. The group gives assistance to worthwhile projects, as well as producing a magazine and raising funds through donations and memberships often from pet parrot owners. They state they have helped conservation work in 22 countries. On a smaller scale, local parrot clubs raise money to donate to a conservation cause. Zoo and wildlife centers usually provide public education, to change habits that cause damage to wild populations. Recent conservation measures to conserve the habitats of some of the high-profile charismatic parrot species has also protected many of the less charismatic species living in the ecosystem, 
12 A popular attraction that many zoos employ is a feeding station for lorries and lorikeets, where visitors feed small parrots with cups of liquid food. This is usually done in association with educational signs and lectures. Birdwatching based ecotourism can be beneficial to economies. Several projects aimed specifically at parrot conservation have met with success. Translocation of vulnerable kakapo, followed by intensive management and supplementary feeding, has increased the population from 50 individuals to 123. In New Caledonia, the Ovia parakeet was threatened by trapping for the pet trade and loss of habitat. Community-based conservation, which eliminated the threat of poaching, has allowed the population to increase from around 600 birds in 1993 to over 2,000 birds in 2009. As of 2009, the IUCN recognizes 19 species of parrot as extinct since 1,600. This does not include species like the New Caledonian lorikeet, which has not been officially seen for 100 years, yet is still listed as critically endangered. Trade, export and import of all wild-caught parrots is regulated and only permitted under special licensed circumstances in countries party to the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species that came into force in 1975 to regulate the international trade of all endangered wild-caught animal and plant species. In 1975, 24 parrot species were included on Appendix I of sites, thus prohibiting commercial international trade in these birds. Since that initial listing, Continuing threats from international trade led sites to add an additional 32 parrot varieties to Appendix I. All the other parrot species are protected on Appendix II of sites. In addition, individual countries may have laws to regulate trade in certain species, for example, the EU has banned parrot trade, whereas Mexico has a licensing system for capturing parrots.